everyone, I'm back, I'm live, I'm just coming to have a discussion with you guys because so many people have asked me, what about after death, what about life after death, what about, <clears throat> what happens after you die, you know, because so many people are coming out of religion and the afterlife is now an, a mystery to a lot of people who are coming out of religion and into you know the occult magic you know things like that so they don't know you know there's so many things saying oh well after you die this is what's going to happen oh after you die this is going to happen and you just don't know most people don't know you know you're not going to know until you get there but there are preparation um there's preparations for it and if we go back to the ancient egyptians a lot of people say, oh, the Egyptians were obsessed with death. They were obsessed with death. I can't learn anything from someone who is all, all, always talking about death, death, death. Okay. They were not obsessed with death. How are y'all doing? They were obsessed with eternity. Okay. How to figure out how to get to the next level of consciousness. How to take, you know, um, knowledge and uh, how to become infinite how to become a god okay so they were not obsessed with death they were using their mortal short life to figure out how to become infinite and eternal consciously okay so that is what they were really obsessed over and they had you know some of the most profound esoteric knowledge you know ever so when we go back to you know the teaching of Thoth and Hermes we have to understand that even though they talk a lot about, you know, traveling, astral traveling, other dimensions, all this is preparation so that when you finally, when your physical body dies, you know what to do, you know where to go, you know how to still be, you know, who you are. That's why um, Hermes' name was Hermes Trismegistus. That means thrice great. That means he's been here a couple times, like three times, you know, he's, you know, he's going to continue his work you know because he has consciousness from former existences or you know brought knowledge with him back or you know he's eternal so his noose or his you know higher infinite mind can just pick up where he left off you know so and then it's also said that oh um those might have lived so many years and just changed his name and went somewhere else but you know, it's all speculation, but let's get into, you know, life after death according to um, Hermes or occult, you know, uh, hermetic occult teachings. So, for example, all of these teachings are, you know, to help you in life. Yes, as above, so below, as within, so without, as alive, so dead, I guess, okay. So, <laughs> that means what you learn here can also help you there. You know the knowledge is eternal so therefore you know when you learn it it's going to help you in all aspects okay um so let's talk about okay so i'm on like i guess this is book 11 and i'm in this book again the ways of hermes um, so, mm, it also talks about what God is, because I've had a lot of people email me, well, I used to believe in God, do I still believe in God, what's God, what is God, is God real, da, da, da. this also goes into, um, what God is, you know, if you want to break it down, I might go into that later in this video, because it kind of relates, so basically, um, when you're astral traveling, when you're meditating, when you're um, doing all these things, you're basically preparing to leave this body and go into the next, you know, into the next stage. So, because that's what happens when you pass away, when you die, okay? So, if you're not um, able to astral travel yet, you know, there's lots of ways that you can figure that out. You just got to work on it. Sometimes it happens naturally. Um, but... It also is saying that the soul, your human soul, 
and the noose, which is, you know, the higher thinking of the infinite universe or God or whatever you want to call it, are separate. The noose covers the human soul when you have the connection. Okay, so for example, if I have a soul and, and I have noose, then my noose is covering my soul. So everything that I feel, experience, learn, um, and things like that are connected with noose. Okay, now when I die, when I, my body starts deteriorating and it's time for me to go, my noose is going to go back up into the infinite and my soul is going to be as it is you know what i'm saying so my soul is going to be if i make good decisions if i made um smart choices in life if i live the life that i wanted to live if i don't have any regrets and blah 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 blah, blah my soul is good you know and i'm happy with all the choices that i made now if my soul is you know, if I didn't do what I wanted to do, if I never made it to what I wanted to make it as, or, you know, if I just have a lot of shoulda, woulda, couldas, and, you know, I don't want to die, I'm scared to die, da, 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 because I don't know what's going on over there, I don't know what's going to happen next, you know, you just never really lived the life that you should have lived, then your soul will go on to find, you know, it won't know what to do, it's just going to be like, I don't know what to do, and it's going to go back into, you know, reincarnation. And, and find another, um, it's not going to know any better, right? You know what I mean? It's going to be lost. Uh, and it's, it might come back in human form and try again. And if you don't, you know, if, if the soul never connected with Noose in the first place or never really um, had time to connect with Noose, because that's what we need is time, then if it doesn't find it again, it will be doomed to, to suffer the same torture, right? Um, and this is what they call hell when you're uh, I've talked to a lot of people okay who are older than me same age as me who have no idea what to do with themselves or their lives they just feel like all they do is go and punch a clock from nine to five and they're not satisfied they're not happy they don't have what they want they're you know they're this this and that that is the definition of hell according to Hermes when you cannot find your path, when you cannot find your happiness, when you cannot be happy on the planet Earth, when you have not fulfilled anything, and when you're just on fire for something, but you cannot find anything, you know, because you don't have time and you are not connected to news, okay? So that is that version of hell for you to be doomed to repeat a mediocre life where you have no direction you know so if you do have news and your soul depart it already knows you know where to go what to do how to come back to create its own universe and blah 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 blah, blah. you know it becomes part of god again or the universe or the dark energy whatever you want to call it and then it comes back at will picks up where it left off gets into another body if it wants to news comes back and joins it and then you start to work um you know and do greater things in each lifetime if you choose to come back you don't have to come back you can stay where you are and as being part of the infinite in and out in and out of you know the cosmos just recycles itself in and out and forever expanding so you know that is what they say in you know this book that that's what god is the cosmos that continuously recycles itself and it's in everything and everyone and every person and every cell and every star. So if you're lost and you don't know what to do and you're older and you don't and you've given everything to everyone and but you have nothing for yourself, you're going to you're basically in hell, you know? You have nothing for yourself, you have no knowledge to get to the next level of consciousness after you pass away you have you're not happy here because you're not doing what you want to do you're stuck in a cycle that you can't get out of you need to connect with a higher energy you need to connect with your higher mind and to do that you have to get out of the world you have to go and become like a hermit for a little while maybe a day or two maybe a week and figure out what it is you want and start working towards it you know and if you don't have the discipline to do this and you keep suffering and keep suffering, you know, 
the answers are in the universal law, you know, and in self-discipline and in becoming greater than what you already are. So if you can't do that, if you refuse to do that, if you're too lazy to do that, that is your punishment. You know, your life is your punishment, basically. So, um, so yeah, so reincarnation can be good or bad, you know. So, for example, if I was a lost person, okay, and I didn't know nothing, I was just, ooh, nine to five, give everything to everybody, never figure stuff out, die. I come, I might come back and relive the same exact life or worse, you know, with even less time to think about it, you know, um, and basically just become a filler, you know. So there are times though when you're introduced or when something crosses your path that could lead you to news or consciousness or you know thinking on a higher level but sometimes you know we're so busy we don't we don't want to do it we don't want to do our research we don't want to go read we don't want to do nothing we just want to ask questions and still never get the answer because the answer comes from within and it clicks in your mind when you're actually you know searching for it and really wanting to connect that's when news will come and open your eyes you know what I'm saying so what I'm saying is if you don't have time if you're lazy and da 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 and you're suffering in life you don't know what direction to go you know a reading is not going to tell you I, if you come to me I will tell you what to do I will say okay well you need to go figure out what it is you want you need to make you know um subtle changes in order to be able to do one thing every day towards it da, da, da. they want a quick easy answer there is no quick easy answer you know what I'm saying and that is what the difference between news and non like you know not being able to have the time to sit there and connect because a, a person would also understand that if their life is suffering they're already in hell if they are struggling suffering unhappy can't stand their job can't stand you know this and can't stand that you're already in hell so then you have people like that have everything they want the the, the perfect life the nice this the nice that can go and do whatever they want can take a vacation whenever they want can do this whenever they want and you and you know you look at that person say like, that person is not so different than me you know why does why do they have it and I don't you know um, because certain things, now I'm not saying everyone who has a great life is connected because that could come through their parents or through, you know, um, being handed down money or something. But if you've watched someone who came from, you know, the same as you came from and leveled up above you, you know, what is it that they have that you're missing? You know, why, how could they find their purpose in life and you couldn't, you know? Did you sacrifice more to other people than they did? Did they were they a little bit more selfish? Were they you know selfish with their time so they could figure out the things that they wanted to do to make themselves happy in life, or were they too concerned about someone else or chasing behind some man who didn't want them? You know, this is the difference, okay? And a lot of women and a lot of guys actually too suffer from giving too much of themselves. To other people that will never give you anything back in return to me that's like pouring you know you're in a desert that's like pouring water down the drain you're not getting it back and you're wasting your time and you're wasting your vitality so you know a lot of like society and man's laws teaches us to sacrifice give 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 but when people don't start giving back and you're not benefiting that's when the giving is supposed to stop and that's when you're supposed to start giving to yourself and figuring out what it is you want instead of what everybody else wants i can ask a person what 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 are your kids like what are your husband like what are your mom like what they can name everything everybody else likes well what do you want and they can't answer i don't know what i want exactly so to me you know what happens when you pass away 
you know what happens when you die and you didn't take the time or the effort to figure out what you want after death you know or where even to go or the knowledge that you should have been seeking and having time to learn about you know you don't even know what to do so you're going to be doomed to repeat you know it's just like generational cycles of you know how families work if the family doesn't know any better and the mother raises the child the child may raises their child like the mother raised them it's a cycle is doomed to repeat so until you take yourself out of that situation and better yourself on earth you know you will then you'll start to seek more answers higher answers you'll have time to sit and contemplate you know um, because a lot of times people are so rushed for time they're working too much they're doing too much for other people that they don't have time to sit and even ponder what they even want in life and so they go through their whole life never knowing what they want never working towards what they want and then when they they see everybody else getting what they want and thriving then they say well I want that too but still I don't know what I want and they will ask everybody else they will try to do all the things everybody else is doing but they will never ask themselves what they want you know so can y'all still hear me okay So, sorry, someone says it's frozen. Okay, okay. So, my thing is, you know, instead of chasing behind that man that doesn't want you, instead of, you know, wasting time with loser friends that aren't going to amount to anything, that's just going to waste your time, go home, sit in your house, get a book, get online, and figure out some stuff. Okay, get some ideas, start researching things, ask yourself what you want, spend some time alone. A lot of people always think they're supposed to be with somebody, supposed to be in some type of relationship, supposed to be with their best friend, supposed to be with their this, this, and that. No, sometimes you're supposed to be alone. You know, most of the great teachers spend a, spend a lot of their time, you know, alone because you have time to think and those are actually going to be your thoughts instead of somebody else's thoughts. So get alone sometimes, you know, and figure stuff out. Don't ask other people because that's not even your thought. That's not what you want. That's what they think you should have. Okay. So, you know, dying is just going to a different consciousness. Okay. And if you don't know how to get there, if you don't know how to get, navigate through the, di the different dimensions and things like that and you don't know what you are and what you're capable of you can be lost doomed to repeat you know if you do know what you're capable of you'll be able to create become come back even greater you know um things like that you know how some of these scientists and musicians and people come back and you're like dang they are super smart they must have been here before da, 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 da. you know they know too much how can they be like that level of genius because they probably knew something and when they died, they came back and just continued on, you know? You know, those child prodigies or those, you know, super smart, intelligent beings and, you know, those extra ultra talented people that you know, seem like they've been, you know, learning for centuries and then just come back and invent something totally new and you're like, you know, they're so smart because they brought it back with them. You know, they weren't doomed to suffer a life of trying to figure out what they were supposed to do again and again and again and never doing it so you know um you know hermetic hermeticism magic the egyptians uh, obsession so you know with death or the afterlife or the different dimensions or the levels of consciousness was so that we can be eternal in our workings you know so for example if we come back and we can bring back our knowledge with us and become eternal just think about our fourth third sixth seventh life we're gonna be great we're gonna be like oh how do you know that I don't, you know we can skip over stuff we can skip the lessons that people are still learning we can skip the baby steps we can go straight into and continue off where we left off you know what I mean so and someone says genetics also has a lot to do with it yes you know if you're gonna come back 
and you're not going to be born into some family that's not taking care of themselves, you know, health wise, da, 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 da. You're going to also get to choose, okay, well, this person, this family background has a background in science and such and such and such and such. So I might as well be born through this one. If I'm going to continue on to do what I need to do, I'll have the resources, the understanding, da, da, da. You know, so we're like that. We're able to do that. So, and sometimes, you know, we want to make a point. We want to teach the world something. So we're going to come through a different method of someone who's not, you know, so great or so smart. We might come through a family with lots of issues just to show that anything is possible, you know. So it just depends on what our message is and what we're supposed to be doing in this life and what we want to do in this life. A lot of people will come back with no purpose and no understanding of who they are or what they even want and they'll do this over and over and over and over again until they just get sick of it one day and come back and say, you know what, I want a lot of time to myself to be able to understand things, study, learn, you know, figure out what I want and they're going to create that life so that they're able to do it, okay, they're not going to be trying to be everything to everybody, they're not going to try to be, um, you know, trying to figure out what's best for them by asking everyone else. They're going to go and figure it out for themselves and uh, um, give themselves the luxury of time and, you know, resources to be able to do it. Now, if I were a lost soul and I was sick and tired of coming back, I would, and, and, I, and I didn't have the knowledge, I would be like, I'm going to put myself in a position where I will have the time to explore myself as a person and figure out what it is that I'm supposed to be doing, what I want to do, and study these things so that I can be better than this, you know. So a lot of times people start off like that. And what they do at that time is totally up to them. If they choose to spend it, you know, frivolously, um, great. If they don't, if they choose to do other things, great. But at some point, they're going to want their purpose or they're going to want their fulfillment. I will call it their fulfillment because we have more than one purpose. But they're going to want to be fulfilled from within. And, you know, money does not fulfill you from within. You know, a person will never fulfill you from within. All the material things will never fulfill you from within. But if you figure out things and you know things and you know where you're going and you know how to get what you want... And, you know, those things are just added bonuses. You know what I mean? So you can have all these things as an added bonus. And, you know, if you know what you want, if you know where you're headed, if you know all of these things, you're happy. You know, you're in comfort. You have nice things. And it's, it's great. But if you're the exact opposite, now you can have money and still be lost. You know, I don't know what to do with myself there. You know, and no matter what you buy, no matter what you spend, you're still going to be lost. So a lot of people will never even ask themselves, what is it that I want? And that's the question I always tell people to ask when they ask me, what path am I supposed to be on? Or what should I be doing in life? And what's my purpose? Why are you asking me? I'm not you. you only you know that. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, so that's what I'm saying. So a lot of people think that I'm obsessed with death and, you know, um, because I work with, uh, Santissima Muerte and I have skulls everywhere. That is a reminder that time is of the essence, you know, a skull that you're going to be a skull. I'm going to be a skull. Eventually everyone dies. Everyone's physical body dies. If you're wasting time, if you're making some corporation rich by showing up every day nine to five and you don't put investment into yourself and figure out what it is that you actually want and are supposed to be doing when you get old when you get gray when you're lying in a bed you know sick getting ready to pass out or pass over and pass and die you're gonna have a lot of questions in your mind like where am I going what am I supposed to do I never did what I was supposed to do dang life is short Life sucks. I never got to do anything. I did so much for other people. I spent 20 years at this, uh, you know, job and then 40 years at this job and, you know, they fired me and, you know, what was life for? What was my life for? I'm not even prepared for death, you know. 
I don't even think I'm going to get into heaven if heaven exists. I don't know what I'm going to do. You're lost. You're lost. You're panicky. You're afraid to die now. But those who know are not afraid to die. They're like, bring it on. I'm ready. Come on now. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to go on to the next. You know. And they're excited. They don't see death as something bad. They're like, okay, I'm getting ready. Like, like the Egyptians. They, you know, they had gold, uh, mat, death masks. You know, they were did rituals you know it was a celebration and they prepared themselves for the next or the afterworld you know or the next or eternity so you can either be like that or you can feel like you wasted your life and you're afraid which one are you gonna be you know I try to talk to people all the time about you know what's really going on after death and a lot of people don't want to hear about it you know they're like I don't care, da, da, da. you know, but as soon as they're on their deathbed or close to death, they're like, I don't want to die. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I think I'm going to go to, you know, they're panicking. I'm like, well, you should have listened to me like five years ago. You know, I'm trying to tell you, you know, um, I used to, I told you I used to be a mortician and, um, stuff like that. I've, I've, and I've seen a lot of hospice patients and stuff like that, but no one wants to hear it right now. Oh, I'm too busy, you know. Oh, I'm on my phone. Oh, I'm I'm emailing work. Oh, I don't, you know. Oh, I didn't hear it. That, that doesn't sound right. Oh, no. The Bible says, oh, okay. But it's so funny because then they start questioning it as the end comes near. Okay. So, okay, I'm, I'm reading some of these questions now. Doo, doo, doo. Okay, so you should be prepared that if you die at any time, you know what to do, where to go, how to get back, you know, you know who to come through, what you want to be, what you want to continue your journey as, da, da, da. If you die right now, would you know how to do that? Or are you going to come back and doom, be doomed to suffer and start all over from scratch? You know, you might have a little bit of memory, but you're still not going to be on the same path. You ever noticed that, you know, how some people are just born knowing stuff? Like, they just automatically get right on the path. Oh, I always knew I was supposed to be into this well, since I was a child. It, I was drawn to it. I didn't let anybody deter me or stop me. And this is what I know I'm supposed to be doing. I don't care what my mom said. I don't care what my dad said. This is who I am. You know? Those type of people who are very self-assured in themselves and their path and what they want to do and what they're supposed to be doing probably knew in the life before and just came back to continue, you know. So if we're lost and we're wandering and we spend a lot of time doing frivolous stuff and we're, you know, slacking out, slacking in life, not trying to get to the next level, don't care, you know, when we grow up, when we're stuck in that cycle of endless torture, of nine to five, of never having enough time, never having enough money, struggling, that's the hell. That's hell, basically. So, yes. That is what it's really all about. This book is really good. I got this a long time ago. This book is, I got this so long ago. I never understood it when I tried to read it at first until I read the Emerald Tablets. Um, and a lot of the stuff became clear until, until I studied alchemy. So this book is not going to make sense to you if you have not studied alchemy or at least read the Emerald Tablets. Because, I mean, it might make a little sense. I think it could. But you're not going to be familiar with some of the terms or, you know, you could be from listening to my videos, but I'm just saying if you are just brand new, you might need to learn a little bit of, you know, universal law, alchemy, symbolism, and, you know, at least thumb through or listen to an audio book of the Emerald Tablets, okay? Um... And it's written, it's because, and it's translated, and it's kind of written in Old English. So, uh, yes. Yeah. 
I'm going to read something from it. Hold on. Mm. Oh, that's the index. Hold on. Um. Okay, truth. Let's talk about truth. There is no whole truth. There is no one truth. There is no whole truth. Okay? So, for example, right now, it's daylight. You know, it's afternoon. That's true here. On the other side of the world, it's night. It's not true over there. Okay? So, there are, there are never any whole truths because of the perception, the angle, the perception of what is okay so if someone says if someone says they know the whole truth and this is the right way you already know straight up that's wrong it's wrong there is no whole truth there's only perception okay so the sensory of perception you know um, is an understanding you know that somewhere in the world is dark it's not all light so to say it is daytime, uh, it's only a half truth. Because if I'm here talking to you right now and you're over on the other side of the world where it's night, what I just said was not true. Not for you. So you have to understand that truth is perception. Okay? Um, it has nothing to do with what is real and what is not real. Because everything on the planet Earth is an illusion earth is like a prism and the, the light from the Sun hits the atmosphere for the in the prism and creates a color spectrum which creates illusion okay so there you have it if there was no Sun you know there'd be no um, just think of the Sun went out we would have no light we would just be bumping into each other we'd be dark matter literally you know because there's no light we can't see each other we don't know what it is so basically the light casts a hologram and that is what reality is and you can kind of change it with thought and you can kind of change it with um, mentalism and knowing the levels of consciousness and dimensions and all that stuff it gets real deep but like I said it's not any whole truth so if you think you have the truth if you think the Bible is the truth and nothing but the truth then that is false um yeah and uh, that's where I get uh, a lot of Christians who have been like literally brainwashed into believing there's only one truth and one religion and one this and one that you know I say you know ask yourself logical questions and use your brain instead of what someone told you you know think your way out of something for example if a little boy was raised on the other side of the world where Christianity was not the main religion or it, let's just go back before Jesus even existed and there was no such thing as Christianity then what you know are those people before Jesus came did they go to hell was there not the only way you know think about the people who live in the rainforest who have never seen you know a Bible or you know any type of cross or anything they just live through nature are they going to hell because they never heard of the name Jesus no because it's perception your truth is your truth you believe that your mind's gonna create that to be true for you these people over here in the rainforest don't know what a Jesus is. They don't know what a Bible is. They live according to their perception, and that is what their reality is. So anyone who is saying, oh, it's the only way it's the truth, is not very smart. And they don't use their full, they don't even use the, you can't use your full capacity of your brain, of course, as a human, but you don't even use what you got. Because any anyone who could think logically would understand that there is no way that one religion and one person and one way is the truth 
not if they have eyes and ears and a television and can see that there's too many cultures, too many countries, too many everything to believe that one is the only truth, okay? Maybe it helps you sleep at night, but it's just not true, okay? <laughs> so, you know, if you think about it, everything that you're doing is leading to your death. You know, every decision you make, every morning you wake up, everything you eat is leading to your demise. So, your knowledge might as well lead to your eternity because you're getting there daily. You're getting to death daily. So, you might as well think your way out of it, you know. Um, you know how Jesus always claims, oh, if uh, you'll live eternally if you uh, accept me and da 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 or, you know, whatever. But, yes, you can say, oh, I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior so I'll have eternal life. But you don't know what to do after. He didn't tell you what to do. Just saying something or repeating something does not help you, okay? It doesn't help you get to that next level. It doesn't help you to get to a better life. It doesn't help you to know who you are and what you are and to um, be able to consciously come back with your noose. You know, it doesn't help you do nothing. And all you're doing is repeating something somebody told you to repeat. You don't know what to do. You don't. I do. So does other people who have studied, her, you know, Hermeticism, ancient Egyptian knowledge, stuff like that. But you don't. But you claim to have eternal life through Christ. But you don't even know what that means. So how can you? You know, so that's what I'm talking about. Everyone is preparing for death. Everyone is preparing for death. They just don't even know it. You know, what do you, what do we live for? I, I'm supposed to do something with my life. Why do you feel rushed? Because you're going to die. You know, if we were immortal beings in the human flesh, time would mean nothing. We wouldn't be rushed to do anything. We wouldn't feel like we need to accomplish anything. We wouldn't be trying to figure out how to start our own businesses and get out of nine to five. We wouldn't care because we have forever. But since we are in this mortal body, we don't have forever and it bothers us because we don't know what to do, where to go. We don't know the next step. We're tired of being, you know, in a circle and we want freedom, you know, freedom on earth before we have to be free through death. So it is a luxury to be able to have the time to have both and learn how to figure out what to do after you die. That is a luxury, you know, and if you think about it. Only like the really rich and the noble and da 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 in ancient Egypt really had that knowledge. Really were able to have the time to sit and ponder and da 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 da. You know, a lot of people couldn't read. A lot of people were just workers, even back then. So not all the ancient Egyptians got to get that knowledge either. They didn't have the time. So you have to place yourself in a situation sacrifice some frivolous things to get that knowledge you know um, instead of watching TV read a book or watch a video on you know hermeticism or dark energy or you know uh, the different dimensions or something like that why are you sitting there watching something that is not going to help you and anyway you know so it is your own fault if you do not create the time, if you do not make the efforts, if you do not seek. It is your fault and you are doomed to suffer again and again until you figure it out. You know, that's just what it is. And eventually, after many, many times, I'm sure we do. We figure it out. You know, and that's just it. Some will figure it out faster than others. Some will take eons. Some won't, you know, it's just what, what is that feeling that you have that's urgent, you know, what is that anxiety you have, what is this anxiety of having, needing a purpose, needing to know what's going to come next, it's a longing, it's a longing for you to ask yourself some questions and figure yourself out before you lose the time that you do have, you know. Uh, 
Um, a lot of people can do like past life regressions if they really want to know what happened in their past life. Yeah. But, you know, even knowing your past life is, is, it's good, but it's not going to help you get to the next level. Uh, so I would, you know, yeah, it's, it's interesting, but I would really focus on after the dimensions, the levels of consciousness, knowing what you are, who you are, your capabilities, you know, that's what you need to be focused on. Um, if you are, let's just say if you are a superhero and you possess some type of power, you know how all in the superhero movies, they never you know, find out their power until they're older, and they were, it, it, it could have just came, and, you know, if that's like humans, we have a power, and we're always distracted from finding it, you're being distracted from finding your, you know, your purpose, your calling, what you're supposed to be doing, um, higher knowledge, you're, you're being distracted from all of that, and you don't even take the time to sit and ask yourself questions anymore, because you want to ask everybody else. You know, so find your superpower, find something that no one else can do but you, you know, or they can't do it quite like you. And it's just, you, you know, you do it and you're good at it or, you know, find what you're supposed to find to feel fulfilled. You know what I mean? Because I see p people old walking around looking unfulfilled. They look like worn out beat up run down and they don't even look happy or fulfilled and they're supposed to have this long life full of wisdom and stuff like that and they don't look like that at all they look like they just got ran over and still never got anywhere that they wanted to get in life you know so don't be one of those people take some time for yourself and figure out you know do you remember like when we were in like in school in elementary school or junior high school and we had to get like in groups and we had to figure out stuff and we had to come up with a plan and we had to do this and this and that with a bunch, you know, with a group of people, you know, and things like that. One person would read it, one person would do the research, one person would do that, right? Um, that's kind of like what you have to do, but on your own. You got to go off and you, you got a problem, you got a project and you have to complete it and figure it out and do all those things yourself in order to get to the next level you know what I mean so if you don't have time to do that there's no way you're gonna have time you know to know what to do after you pass away you're not gonna be able to tell your kids you're not gonna be able to instruct your loved ones you know and they're y'all all gonna be lost <laughs> so you know we a hundred percent don't know what happens but we know of the dimensions of the levels of consciousness of the cosmos of what you know um, eternity is um, we do know we're part of source and we go in and out and in and out and the, the cosmos and the universe and the multiverse is all recycled back inside of each other over and over again and it keeps expanding we know that metaphysically enough because it's been said over and over and over and over throughout history all the way coming back from you know so so and we've seen all the people who study these things in life as well being successful you know so I'm gonna trust that you know I'm gonna trust this knowledge because I've seen it in action I've seen it transform people I've seen it do this I've seen it do that I've seen it work in my life and other people's lives so I'm going to say after death yes where do you go? What do you do? What do you see? What do you feel? You know, um, do you even see it all? Are you darkness? We don't know any of these things. So that's why it's good to get rid of fear and start moving towards this because your life is super short. And if you don't know what you're doing, if you're not even happy in your life and you're not doing anything, you might as well be preparing for to become an eternal being at least. That could be your purpose if you don't have one. <laughs> right? And I always say, if you don't have a purpose, if you, if you don't have something that you're supposed to be doing because maybe you didn't have anything before in your former life and so you can't find your purpose because you never asked yourself in that life or this life, perhaps you should just start 
figuring out the afterlife or how to become eternal so that you can find your purpose. You know what I mean? If you can't find your purpose, you couldn't find it in that life, you can't find it in this life, focus on becoming eternal so that you can't can find it in one of your lives, you know? That can be your purpose until you figure it out. <clears throat> and maybe through researching and learning stuff, you will find your purpose. It might come to you, you know? So, death, you know, death is not real. It is just a transference of energy into the next dimension consciousness or whatever so it's nothing to be afraid of if you're afraid to die if you hate death if you don't understand death start studying it start reading about it start understanding it before you fear it you know take the fear out of it with knowledge also understand that most of the ancient people most of the I mean most of the ancient teachers philosophers and things like that <clears throat> knew this and they lived on purpose they, they did everything they did was by purpose you know they didn't waste time they didn't waste time with people that weren't going to benefit them they didn't waste time chasing behind people that didn't want them they used the most of their life to get what they wanted you know so you don't have time if you've been chasing behind someone for one two three years you've wasted one two three years you know if you've been wishing hoping and saying you were going to do something for three years you could have already been done with it instead of talking about it, okay? So that's why I like skulls. That's why I work with Cynthia Simon Morte because she realizes and she makes you realize, let, let me say, she makes you realize that your life is this short. Are you going to be happy in it? Are you going to be fulfilled in it? Are you going to learn how to get to the next level? Are you going to learn how to level up in your next lifetime? Or are you going to come right back even worse or doomed to repeat it? So it's kind of up to you whatever you want to do just understand that you can't fear death you have to learn about things prepare yourself have it up here um and don't let anybody stop you or deter you if you're afraid oh well, i can't go on this journey because family members and friends they won't understand oh, who cares when you die they're not coming with you <clears throat> That's the trick. People think, oh, my family's going to come with me when I don't know. Mm -hmm. They're not. You you know, unless y'all die together, but still your consciousness are two different perceptions. So, no. Focus on you because that's what's important. You get so distracted. I, there's too many women in this world that get so distracted by trying to do everything, please everyone, and are left empty you can't do that to yourself you got to make sure you take care of yourself first okay they will understand because before you they took care of themselves and etc etc or they can learn to take care of themselves what if you die who's going to take care of them then who's going to do what you do for them then somebody else right so stop sacrificing yourself and being uh you know used and abused for nothing get yourself time get yourself some time get yourself some purpose get yourself some knowledge so that you can be better okay and don't suffer anymore don't struggle anymore don't do any of those things anymore because you don't have to it's a choice you keep choosing a lot of people keep choosing to suffer and struggle because they don't have a purpose and they think suffering and struggling is their purpose so therefore it becomes your purpose you know what i'm saying so if you're struggling, if you're proud, oh, I made it on my own after 10 years of working eight jobs and, you know, struggling and da, da, da. and you're proud of struggle and you're proud of struggling, well, then that's your purpose is struggle. Your your purpose is to show people, people what they don't want, okay? Because that is a purpose. Your purpose is to show how, show people how they don't want to live, okay? So think about that for a second. If you're so proud of struggling and, you know, scraping and scratching and it's, you know, da 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 then that's your purpose because that's what you gloat in, that's what you brag about, and that's what you feel good about. That's your purpose, to struggle. Now, you can change your purpose with knowledge and understanding, but you can't, you know, whatever you're proud of doing, whatever you brag on, whatever you can do and do well. That's 
that's your purpose okay that is your talent that's what's going to get you to the next level so that's what it is um Yeah. So anyway, life is short. Go get what you want. Don't sit and talk about it. Go get it. You know what I'm saying? I could have, you know what? I, I was talking about some stuff uh, two years ago. Just like some other people were talking about some stuff two years ago. They're still talking about stuff that they were talking about two years ago. I've already been there, done it, and started something new. Why? Because I didn't talk. I did. I took action. You know, um, People like to hear themselves talk. People have words and they tell you stuff. A lot of guys and a lot of women tell you stuff to get what they want out of you. And you take those words to the bank and you can't cash them, you know, because words aren't worth a lot of money. Um, so if you're only going by what someone is telling you or saying to you and you're basing your life on that instead of action or something you could hold in your hand, then you think money, and you think words are money. You think you can take words to the bank and cash them and get something back for them. But you can't because there's so many people that will tell you what you want to hear to actually get what they want and leave you with words. So if you're a talker and if you listen to talkers and you get nowhere and you're still where you were two years ago talking about the same exact thing, it's because you took no action and you value words over action. And, you know, you're holding on to words as if they're worth money when they have no collateral. So make sure you're taking action instead of talking and talking and talking. Because I don't, you know, a lot of people have talked and talked. I've been doing readings for people for like up to, uh, four, three to four years. I have clients that have, are doing the same exact thing that they were doing four years ago, talking about the same thing, have not done anything. But yet, somehow, they still want a reading asking me the same exact questions. And I'm like, okay. You know, then there's some people who have done so much, accomplished so much in four years on a higher level. And, you know, it's amazing to see the difference. Those people have the same 24 hours have the same brain but one chose to take action and one chose to keep talking so you have to understand that you know one was a negative thinker one is a positive thinker one one will listen to you talk for five hours and do nothing one will listen to you talk for five hours and execute okay these are the type of people we have in the world now I know a lot of people and I know both type of people right and the one who suffers the most are the talkers because they can never get anywhere. All they do is keep talking about it, you know? So don't be a talker, be a doer. Get your mind, use universal law, learn, because the one thing about universal law is it will take you to the next level on earth as well. You know, it will get you the things you want. It will help you to stop struggling. The gym that I go to is in a really, really nice area, okay? We live in a nice area. And if a lot of the cars in the parking lot, you know, they have little stickers and stuff on them. A lot of, they have Masonic symbols, you know, um, this kind of symbol, that kind of, like, of awareness. Like, a lot of people on those higher levels are in the occult. They study. They know universal law. They were given metaphysics, you know. So they know and so they do you know it's not just for the wealthy but it's not just for people who have money or have time you can do it too if you create the time you make the time if you stop trying to do everything else for everyone and please people you will make the time too if you stop doing frivolous things you'll have that luxury of time too you know so we have the same 24 hours in one day you know and just because some people are in a fraternal organization or 
that same knowledge is out there still. The stuff that they teach, the, the metaphysics that they teach, the esoteric, the occult that they teach in fraternal organizations are also in libraries and online. Just because they have their own secrets and stuff of the fraternal order does not mean that the knowledge is not open and free for you. You know what I'm saying? Um, people just don't seek the knowledge. People just don't know where to look, don't know what to read, da 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 You know, so now that you know, you can accomplish a lot of things too. Before it was hidden, you couldn't find a, you couldn't find a lot of it. You couldn't find it online well because there was no online. You wouldn't know what to look for in the library, right? There was not a lot of talk about it. There was a lot of secrecy surrounding it. Now, in you know the age of information, you can find it. Do you look for it? No. Do you make time to read about it? No. Do you want the secrets that they have? Yeah. Well, go get them. And like I said, any path to enlightenment is a path to enlightenment. Any path to knowledge is a path to knowledge. Doesn't matter where you start, as long as you start. You know, it's going to lead you to the next thing, to the next thing, because they all came from the same place. They, all the knowledge, all the spiritual knowledge came from the same exact place. If you start anywhere, you're going to trace, trace it on back to ancient Egypt, though, Sumeria, all that. Okay? That's where you're going to trace it back to. So you might as well start somewhere. It doesn't matter. If you get stuck, it's because you probably went the religious route. And if your mind, if you do have news, you're going to start questioning that religion. And if you're questioning religion, that's a, that's a red flag. You know, there's more. Keep going. You know. And I, I always say, you know, don't ever... Believe anything anyone says, go and do your own research so that you can see it from your perspective. Because how I see it might not be or feel the, the same way as it will when you see it or when you experience it or when you learn it or when you research it. You might come up, up, up with a really profound way of seeing something that I couldn't because of your perspective. So that's why I always want you to go and do your own research so that you can experience it because that's what it's all about an experience so always do your research always seek knowledge always make time for yourself always um, remember you know you don't have a lot of time on this planet and so you better live on purpose you know I ask people and this is kind of morbid sometimes when they come to me I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my life. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I haven't done this. I haven't accomplished this. I haven't done that. I was like, well, imagine if you died today. What would your obituary say? What have you accomplished? What have you done? <laughs> you know, what, write your own obituary. And if you don't like it, get on, get on it. You know, figure out something. <laughs> So, yes, write your own obituary. If it sucks, you know your life needs to change quick. You know you need to do something. <laughs> I used to have to write people's obituary. And I was like, ooh, this person lived a sad life. Look at this. You know, I'm a bitch. She glad she did, you know. <laughs> you know, and then there were some that were this long. Like, this person did this, 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 and that. Da, 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 da. I was like, dang, this is a good biography, you know, almost a bi biography of all these accomplishments. And da, 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 da. I'm like, wow, I'm impressed. And the person I never met, you know, so they leave behind a legacy, all of that. They will probably be remembered for a long, long time, you know, such and such and such. And it really doesn't matter, but it probably mattered to that person who died. And they probably felt fulfilled, happy, satisfied, purposeful, and they were, you know, ready to go. The other person was like, dang, I could have did this, I should have did that, I did this, I should have did that, I could never do this, I could never do that. 
I'm glad I'm dead. Let me start over, you know. So think about it. And someone inboxed me the other day. Do you believe in God? I just stopped. I, I just started watching your channel and through your videos, I don't know what to think about God anymore. Do I still pray to him? Da, 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 da. I'm like, God is, I, I, say, I always say this in my videos. I say, I say, God is like the ocean and you're like the raindrop. Does a raindrop pray to the ocean? You know, the raindrop has, you know, become a different aspect. It's still water. It still is going to eventually go back to the ocean and join the ocean. And then water is going to precipitate back into the clouds and come back again. That's just how, that's what God is. You know, if you believe in a higher creator being, that would be exactly what it is. A recycle cosmos. So, when people ask me about prayer, I'm like, you pray to yourself, you know, <laughs> I, there's a difference between prayer and other things. I say, you're a God slash goddess. You don't pray, you will. Does God pray? Who does God pray to himself? No, you will stuff to happen because you are God. You know, you are the universe. You are the cosmos. You will what you want. You are the dark energy. You will it. You don't pray anymore. Praying is saying that I am not God. <clears throat> so, why would I pray? If I prayed, it means I'm not, I'm not what I say I am, you know. So, I can't pray because that would be silly. Dear Ashura Star Goddess. I pray to myself, you know, please let me be very successful. Let me do this, this and that. Okay, great. D did that help me? No. <laughs> Maybe um, manifesting is a closer step to it. You know, some people can't just say, oh, I'm, I'm God. They have to do baby steps. So maybe manifest it first, the regular way. Then manifesting with dark energy. Okay, now you will stuff to happen, you know, da, da, da. it's baby steps because you can't fully understand it if you're just coming out of religion. So, you know, I don't pray because why would I? That's silly. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, well, what are deities? What are deities? What are angels? What are demons? There are also aspects of the cosmos. Okay, um, the cosmos is not all good or all bad or, you know, uh, everything is everything. Y'all know that Lauryn Hill song? Um, it's just like a puzzle piece. You have two opposing puzzle pieces, one like this and one with the thing sticking out, right? This is good, this is evil. Put them together, okay, now we have a bigger picture. Now they're joined. There's no good and evil anymore. It's just a piece of puzzle that got stuck together. What's the next level? Okay, now you have these two pieces sticking up. What goes up here? You know, it's a puzzle. And the further you go down in the dimensions, then you have duality, okay? So, it's like two puzzle pieces going to war. But the people on this higher dimension are like, what them puzzle pieces doing? They just need to get on together and stick so we can finish this puzzle, you know? So, it kind of looks silly from someone whose consciousness is up here and looking down here, you know? <laughs> so you can't think in duality if you want higher consciousness you can't think in duality anymore and if you do it should only be to function in 3d earth but then you know the truth you know who you are and you know what it is okay um so keep that in mind you know i have to pretend and pretend and fake it and and say a yes 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 whatever but i know the truth you know, I don't feel it and I don't vibrate it. I say what they want to hear and what they think and what they will accept because they're not on that level yet. But when it comes down to what I'm doing, I don't work on that level. I don't work from that consciousness. So, 
it doesn't matter. I can fake it. I can act. But at the end of the day, I know, I know. Okay. So, someone says repent. Yes, I repent. I am so sorry, self, that I messed up. Let me start over and try again, you know. Let me be the, the phoenix from the rising ashes and be bored again through myself. There you go, okay? So, if I'm going to pray and repent, I'm only talking to myself. I might as well get a mirror. Okay? So, it's funny when people tell you to do all that stuff. And they're sitting here. Like, if you're on YouTube watching this video and you're a Christian, you, you should be reading something else, you know. You, you could be reading this. You know, in this book it says Christianity, Judo Christianity stemmed, plagiarized basically, stemmed from Hermeticism. Anyway. <laughs> someone says, someone said repent. Repent from what? Looking good? <laughs> I repent. Anyways, happy fall. Um, Thanksgiving is coming up soon. Thanksgiving, use Thanksgiving, and you know people say, oh, it's about the pilgrims and blah blah blah, and the Indians and the Native American. I don't like celebrating it for that reason. I celebrate it to give thanks, to be appreciative, and to have gratitude for everything that I know, the path that I'm on, da da da, and the people in my life. You know, I don't celebrate that silly reason. Okay. Um, but people can celebrate holidays however they choose. I'm not Christian, but I will celebrate Chris Christmas. And because before Christmas, there was Yule. There was the, the winter solstice. There was, you know, uh, a winter ceremony back in the old days. So it's about the cosmos, right? Every religious holiday lines up with the cosmos. So, Thanksgiving is not a religious holiday, so I use it as gratitude, you know. The more you have to be thankful for, the more you will attract things to be thankful for. So, if I were you guys, I would use Thanksgiving as a really good manifestation day, as well as a gratitude day. Mm-hmm. Someone says, Christian is Saturnella. <laughs> See? Everything lines up with the cosmos. So, anything you think that is uh, happening, you know, religiously, it's just lined up with the cosmos. So, and Jesus wasn't born on that day, and Jesus probably never existed, really. <clears throat> so, And so many people are also born on December 25th. So, and are they supposed to be special too? <laughs> are they special? Are they the Christ? <laughs> I celebrate anything with a lot of energy surrounding it. Because if you're, you know, if you're into magic. And if you're into energy and things like that. You're going to celebrate all that stuff to get that energy, to get on that frequency, to store that energy, to do what you need to do with it and make it work for you. You know, you can say, oh, I don't celebrate that because I don't believe in that. But you're just throwing away some good energy right there. You're throwing away some good manifestation. Everyone's happy in those times. Well, not everyone, but, you know, think their, their spirits are higher. You know, their love is higher. In some, most, most families. <laughs> I'm not going to say all families, you know. Their vibrations are higher, so why wouldn't you tap into that frequency? Why wouldn't you tap into that energy, you know? So you have to think of it like that. You're not supposed to think of it on the 3D level, you know? You know. Yes, you can think of it that way too, but celebrate it for a different reason, you know? I was watching this funny video. I think it was, it was this goth dude. His name was like Voltaire or something like that. I don't know. And he had a song called... Uh, Santa Claus is Satan. 
it was like a Christmas song that he he made and he was playing it, uh, the guitar and he was like Santa Claus is Satan and I was just like and he was like dropping knowledge in the song it was hilarious it's like yeah they say he's a big red elf to me that sounds like the devil or the demon he says he has elves which are imps you know uh, doing his dirty work you know making stuff being slaves um, <laughs> And his name is Old Saint Nick. If you take out Old, or if you take out uh, Saint, you got Old Nick, which is a nickname for the devil. And it was just like breaking it down. It was hilarious. And then my my kids are like <clears throat> laughing. But you know, I, if something is, has that many coincidences, it's probably not a coincidence. <laughs> then he says, "Oh, he comes down in the fire in the chimney, uh, and he's in." He falls, you know, into a fireplace of, you know, burning fires, and he's not scared. <laughs> it's like, okay. Makes sense to me. It's funny, though. Not that I believe that, but it does make sense. If you do believe it, then it could play a trick on your mind. <laughs> so, do y'all have any questions before I go? I'm going to go, and please ask me stuff that is about the topic don't ask me about love spells and some guy who broke up with you and left you and you haven't talked to him in eight years but you want me to magically make him come back to you don't ask me that please. <laughs> okay what is that book called it is called the ways the way of Hermes and new translation of the Corpus Hermeticum so basically it's the Corpus Hermeticum translated a new translation of it okay and I think it cost you probably can get it used but I'm trying to see if there's a price it was $14.95 when I got it you can probably get it cheaper. It says uh, on the back, I'm going to read it. Do you call the moon Diana or just the moon? The moon. <laughs> um, the excellence. Okay, Hermes says the excellence of the soul is understanding. For the man who understands is conscious devoted and already godlike bam that's what I kind of said in a nutshell yeah so the excellence of the soul is understanding and you gotta know stuff to understand it right for the man who understands is conscious devoted and already godlike Okay. Um, it says my dis my discourse leads to the truth. The mind is great and guided by this teaching, and is able to arrive at some understanding. When the mind has understood all things and found them to be in harmony with what has been expounded by teachings, it is faithful and comes to rest. And that beautiful faith so it's basically saying when you seek knowledge and learn and understand and you go on to the next you're peace you're at peace you're not worried you're not scared you don't you're not lost you know what to do you know so that's on the back of the book but that's excerpts from what's in the book uh, so very good life tips in here very good um, lessons very good things to learn and if you um it, it's easy to break down in the new translation this is the new translation of the the corpus hermeticum okay um <laughs> thank you uh someone says Congrats on my new book. 
thank you. Um, I do have my book on Amazon. If y'all want to go get it, it is. If y'all probably already got it or not, it is uh, how to manifest with dark energy, and you can you can get it. It's still available. Do I know another YouTuber, Nazir Rob? Yes, I know. I, I I'm subscribed to that channel. He's he's really uh he's really good. Um, what is consciousness without a body? It is um <coughs> excuse me. Sorry y'all. I had something throw. A consciousness without a body is an eternal being. An eternal soul. Okay. Hi, Shira. Someone makes a bad decision in suicidal state of mind with the law of cause and effect. Is there any way possibly to avoid the effect? Um, I mean, I don't know the situation, but if you can think of a way to stop whatever is going to happen happening, then probably, yeah. Um, but if you've already put something in motion and you can't stop it, then that decision that you've made has consequence. That's why it says always think twice before you do something. Think on the logical side and the emotional side. The emotional side is temporary. So the decision that you make in emotion is not going to be the same decision you wish you would have made when that temporary emotion wears away. So never make decisions during emotional times. And if you have... It's the lesson that you gotta learn. Okay. So. My mom is a pessimist and I find myself becoming one. It's hard to, for me to mentally get away. How old are you? Because if you're old enough to leave and go and have your own life, that's what you need to be focusing on. My mom was a very pessimist person, very negative person. And I was becoming negative too until I left. I said, I gotta go. I gotta get out there. You know? And I freed myself. So that's what you gotta do. If you're young and you still live there because you have to, just put on some earphones and have a strong mind don't care what she thinks know that she's wrong know who you are and know what the truth is you know your truth anyway just because she's negative doesn't mean you're negative if she keeps saying negative stuff to you doesn't mean you have to listen to it or accept it you know we are uh, your mother and you are two separate beings you don't have to um accept what she says yeah you can respect her but you don't have to believe everything that comes out of her mouth Have I ever learned that lesson? Yes. I used to make emotional decisions all the time. And I would wake up the next day and be mad at myself. <laughs> Dang, why did I do that? I was so stupid. You know. But I learned. And I stopped. And I started thinking more logically. Like, if I hadn't have done that, I could have, you know, I could have saved this much money. I could have bought this. I could have did that. I could have. I'm so stupid. Okay. Next time, I just, you know, I get mad. I live in that moment for a second. I think about what I want to do. And then I think about the consequences. And so I don't do it. I find a better way to deal with it mentally. You know. Okay, I'm going to get you back. Or I'm going to I'm gonna do something against you. And you'll never see it coming. But I'm not going to act right now. I'm going to wait. And I'm going to plan this out strategically. You know. And then a day later, you're not even mad anymore. And you don't care. And you just moved on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no love lost. Did your mom ever become enlightened? She still has her negative ways. I have to keep reminding her, look, 
don't come around here with that you know <laughs> because I'm like look you're you're too negative everything you say out of your mouth is negative 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 I don't want to hear that you know I talk to her because she knows she's negative but she just can't help it you know and I have to keep reminding her why are you so negative why are you so negative I'm not negative I'm just realistic I was like, well, why are you realistically negative instead of realistically positive? <laughs> well, I don't like to get people's hopes up in case something goes wrong. They have to be prepared. I was like, that's why they have insurance. That's why they have, you know, plans, emergency kits, emergency rooms, all this stuff, just in case. But we don't sit here expecting to go there every day, do we? <laughs> So I have to enlighten her every time because honestly, if I don't, she will keep going and, you know, somebody has to say, okay, that's enough. Even if it's the child of the parent, sometimes the child has to teach the parent, you know, maybe we weren't, um, maybe her life was different than my life and that negativity that she has stemmed from that. And it's something that she has to work on consciously. And it's a choice. Some people, like I said, like to suffer. Some people like to think the worst because they have little purpose or no purpose. So they have to keep that, you know, suffering going. So ask your mom, does your mom have a purpose? Is she happy and satisfied with her life? Because if she were... She wouldn't be like that. She's probably given everything to everybody and has nothing left for herself but her suffering. And that's what she's doing. And then she's trying to make other people suffer with her. And that is your choice to say, no, I don't accept that. You know? It's so funny because <clears throat> when my mom tries to talk to me, it's impossible because I have an answer for all of her, you know, stuff and she just can't do it. She's like, well, what if I was like, well, I don't think like that. So I'm not attracting that to me. I said, if you keep thinking about it, you might attract it to you or you might attract it, you know, to your life. But I don't think like that. Um, I said, look, our lives are totally different. You thought the worst, and so you attracted the worst. I thought the best after I got out of your house, and I attracted the best. So either way, you're going to get what you want. Either way, you're going to get what you attract and think about. I choose not to think about those things. I don't want to worry about it. Worrying does nothing. You know, it's a waste of time. So I have to sit there and explain this to her like I'm explaining it to the video and to, you know, YouTube and to y'all. And then she's like, okay. But then, once she leaves and she gets back into her own world, it comes back. Because that's who she is. That's what she relates to. That's her personality because she chooses to suffer on purpose because she doesn't feel fulfilled. So, why do, you, why do ribs... I don't know what ribs is. Law of Attraction... So... Like, so you know, she's the kind of person that watches the news and hones in on the negativity and calls you and says, Ooh, they're, you know, they're robbing today. It's like they rob every day. Ooh, you know, um, be careful out there. I'm like, they kill every day. They rob every day. Serial killers kill every day. Robbers rob every day. You know, people are hurt every day. Every day, every day. Every day. <laughs> and it's like, they rob me. My neighbor got robbed. My neighbor, he didn't get robbed at his house. He got robbed at his job. And he's super paranoid, too. So he attracted that to himself. So I'm like, see? <laughs> the chrome skull is awesome. Thank you. Oh, I want to show y'all something like that. It's so cool. Like, oh! I got this on sale, the 75% off Halloween sale. It's 
vampire skulls look and then there's like a rose and it's a mirror and it's, and it's, it's a stand and it's the back so I got it for my vanity over there it's so cool this was normally $24 and it was 75% off I saw this when it first you know got on the shelf at the store and I'm like ooh I'm gonna come back after Halloween and get that for like a couple dollars <laughs> And I did. So, <clears throat> not spending twenty five dollars on that. <laughs> anyway, wow, awesome. My mom does that too. My mom does that too. Sometimes ignore her calls because she just want to talk. That. Yep, I've ignored my mom's calls many times, and just I'm on a reading. I'll text. I'm on a reading. Because I know. And like recently, okay, I upgraded my car recently and I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell my mom. I didn't tell my sister. I didn't tell my brother. Because some stuff you can't tell people, you know, because they're going to have something to say about it, negative or da da da. And even though it's too late and they can't do anything about it, they're still going to talk about it and say you should have did this or well, it's too late now, you know. So, I I let her see it when she came over. She didn't realize it was, a, you know, she didn't even realize it yet until um, I opened the garage and we were leaving. And she's like, oh, you washed your car because I got the same color and it's, it's still an SUV. It's like, oh, you washed your car. Wait, it looks different. What happened? Oh, you got a new car. You know, I'm like, <laughs> and it was too late by then. She couldn't really say anything. She said, well. Then she started asking me about all the payments and stuff like that. I'm like, you think I would, you think I would buy a car if I couldn't afford it? <laughs> and you know, they just want uh, anybody just wants something to say, you know. And it's it's not their business and it's not their decision. So even if they're your parents, you know, maybe they're looking out for you and want the best for you. You can't let them deter your thinking because that's your own thoughts. Because your thoughts create your reality, you know. Um. <clears throat> I think I'm here to live on purpose. I'm not here to live like, you know, um, not enjoying my life, not having the things that I feel like I deserve to have. I'm not here to do that. I'm, you know, I'm here to be happy, enjoy my life, enjoy the car that I drive, enjoy the house I live in, enjoy the clothes I wear, enjoy the makeup I wear, enjoy everything. You know, I'm not here to suffer. And say, oh, I don't deserve that, or I can't have that because this is what I'm here to have whatever I feel like I deserve. And if you don't like that, and if you don't think that you know your child deserves to have everything in life, then you're the one that's suffering. You know, so think about that. A lot of parents, they love you, y'all get along great, but then there's that little negative streak that you have to correct. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. so you know if I'm dying if I'm gonna die I don't know when I'm gonna die but I, at least I'll say oh I had a nice car oh I had a nice house oh I had cute clothes oh I had you know this and that I don't have to say oh I never thought I deserved nothing so you know I didn't do anything nice for myself I sacrificed and gave to everybody else oh now I'm dead you know all they're gonna do is go see what else you got to take wait for the people to read the will and take the rest <laughs> you know so live live on purpose don't go into debt I'm not I'm not saying go into debt if you can afford something nice don't hold back go get it mm -hmm. so and then we have some people who talk about materialism oh you shouldn't have nice things you shouldn't focus on material and da da da, da. you should focus on being dusty and poor and da, da da in the spiritual world well i already know how to navigate the spiritual world okay now i could i can get undusty and focus on the physical world as well you know so just because you haven't figured it out don't mean i haven't just because you see that i have nice things and can do this doesn't mean i haven't figured out the spiritual aspect i could probably teach you something you know so it gets to me when a lot of people get upset with you um, because you live on purpose 
and then they try to say, oh, you need to be focused on the spiritual. I already focused on the spiritual. How do you think I got here? As above, so below. You know. <clears throat> so, I feel like we as people deserve to live on purpose, be happy, not struggle, blah, 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 blah. And if that's what you're doing, find a way out. That's your purpose until you find your purpose. If you're struggling, find a way out of struggle so you can find your purpose. You don't go from, you know, um, walking in mud to wearing a tuxedo or a dress. You got to take a bath first. You got to cleanse yourself first. You got to come out of that struggle in order to be able to clean up, you know. So it's not just from struggle to not struggling. It's struggle find a way out then clean yourself up you know people want to go from here to here and they're skipping something the transformation <clears throat> um astral travel it's like i've been doing it automatically since i was a child so either I've known from the past life or it's just something natural that never went away. You know, uh, you go to sleep, you're, you'll find, you'll find that something is super realistic versus, you know, a satire, like a, a dream sequence. You'll know the difference. Okay. You'll come back with knowledge. You'll come back with experience. You'll come back with knowing things versus, oh, that dream didn't make no sense. You know, and I was scared. There's a difference. You can tell. You can tell when you've been somewhere and when you've dreamed or dreamt, you know. Um, things that are ultra realistic to you, feel things, things that you learn, saw specific things, those are probably astral travel versus, you know, seeing weird dream sequences and stuff that doesn't make sense to you and it keeps slipping and flopping. You know, those are most likely dreams. But when you astral travel, it's one continuous lessons, beings, you know, comfort feels real, like you're awake. So pay attention to those feelings. It's how you're vibrating that says if you're dreaming or if you're astral traveling. You probably already astral traveling, you just don't know. So pay attention to how you're feeling in the dream, what you're able to do in the dream. Are you learning something in the dream? Are you seeing knowledge? Are you coming back with epiphanies and knowledge and answers? You know? Mm hmm Okay. Let's see. I see some people arguing in the comments. Someone's saying that they're going to curse some somebody and then the other person is saying, I'm protected by Yahweh. And your whole family will be spied. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that alone let y'all finish that argument. <laughs> Let's see who wins. <laughs> How, your whole family would be smited. Did you hear that? Ooh, he said smite. What's your comeback? <laughs> Y'all want to hear what my comeback will be? I'm protected by Yahweh too. And I already asked him to smite your family before you asked him to smite my family. <laughs> so guess what? <laughs> Maybe we'll both be smited. Anyway. <clears throat> So, 
you know, I was getting a lot of people on my channel, a lot of people on my Facebook who are what I called uh, the, the Hebrew Israelites. And I just realized, well, not just, but I knew it was a long time ago. I knew this a long time ago. Because my name is Ashira. It's supposed to be the wife of God or wife of Yahweh, whatever. But she divorced him and left. Child. She went and did her own thing. Okay. <laughs> so, not the wife, but I took everything. Took knowledge, took power. <laughs> you know, there was a Shira cult back in the old days. She used to gather around trees and have meetings and stuff like that. But, you know, the feminine principle, the divine feminine, the return of the divine feminine, yes. Um, so I say, you know, learn all you can, you know, I, I don't choose names just because it sounded good or it was cute or whatever. I did a lot of research, you know, um, that's my little YouTube, my spiritual name or whatever. A lot of people ask me how to find your spiritual name. Um, it came to me. I didn't have to look for it, you know, um, <clears throat> If you Google Ashira with an H at the end, there's a painting of Ashira that looks just like me. Like, just like me. Same eyes, same everything. If you look under images, um, and so it was like looking in a mirror. And I read about her, I researched her, and I was like, sounds like me. You know, and that's how it began. <laughs> Someone says all all so-called Negroes and Muslims are Hebrew Israelites. I'm not a Hebrew Israelite. <laughs> um, I don't claim anything because I am what I am in this life and where you know all those things. I'm not going to sit there and unless I'm getting a check from it, I, I'm not claiming it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Unless the Hebrew Israelite is going to send me a check for claiming that, I don't, I'm claiming myself, okay? <clears throat> yeah, I got a check, I claim it. Not, nope, it doesn't benefit me. What, why would that benefit me in, in any way, you know? Y'all think black people are cursed, so I don't think that. So why would I, why would I, why would I do that? You know, that's the funny thing. You're, you're in a uh, group that thinks your kind is cursed. The power of mentalism is very powerful. That's why most of y'all are broke. Because you're cursed mentally. And I'm sorry, but that's just the truth. I have so many women that were in relationships with Hebrew Israelites that broke free. Because she said, y'all are crazy. So many of these women, y'all are crazy. And abusive and crazy and so they leave you and then they come to me <clears throat> and I get them back together mm -hmm. so you know I dust them off get that dust off you girl <laughs> Let's do it. Anyways, I'm going to go. I've been on here for too long. I'm going to go on my other channel for a few minutes. So I'll see y'all later. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and I'll see y'all maybe next week. I don't know. Maybe I'll do something for Thanksgiving. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to be super busy. I got um, someone coming into town. Got to cook. Got to go to the grocery store, all that good stuff. And I'm going to try to sneak in a video. So if I don't see y'all before then, happy Thanksgiving. If not, you know, I'll be back. <laughs>